<laughs> and well, in the past couple of days we've been having some really interesting news about the new Intel GPUs and it seems that they're finally coming with things like Arc B580 in more details from ASRock once again, specs on the Intel website as well and even today things like ZDNet Korea saying that Intel GPUs are ready to be released this year. But the point still stands, at least for me of course. Will Intel GPUs finally be a good buy? Because even nowadays we have the first Intel discrete graphics like the Intel Arc A series uh, with the A770, A750, A580 I believe and A380 I guess and we do have some interesting choices depending on the price. But Anything besides the A750, at least in my opinion, makes absolutely no sense because the other cards in the same price bracket from AMD and Nvidia just destroy the card. And even in terms of drivers, features and so on, uh, usually the AMD and Nvidia counterparts are much ahead, even in terms of price performance. But as the newer generation cards from AMD and Nvidia come to the market, what we see is that the prices keep increasing, even, even if slightly, they just keep increasing. And the mid-tier or the, the low to mid-tier cards keep getting way more expensive and in terms of price performance, they're just not worth it generally. And I believe there is where Intel can kick in. Alchemist was and is their first iteration of a discrete GPU and it was kind of okay. and actually in some things it made things quite right. For example, in terms of ray tracing, the ray tracing performance of the Intel GPUs was actually very, very good. So... If they improve upon the Alchemist and bring some really interesting things in Battle Mage, things will get really, really interesting. And if priced accordingly, even better. So let's start with the ASRock B580 has been leaked and we have some Amazon leaks, of course, and we have pictures of the Steel Legend B580. This is from video cards, of course, and the card is now confirmed to feature the XE2 HPG architecture, the same exact way this video is set to feature GVG Mode, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. This is from video cards of course and the card is now confirmed to feature the XE2 HPG architecture and is overclocked to 2.8 GHz. And this is actually an interesting thing because if we go to the other cards like the A750, A770, their clock frequency was quite lower. Uh, I believe that, for example, for the A770, it was around 2.5, 2.4, and in some scenarios, it would go even lower. So in this case scenario, if we get a car that at least is close to 2.8 gigahertz constantly, the performance alone would increase considerably. Uh, and we now have for the mid-tier card, instead of having only 8 and 16 gigabytes like we had before, now we have the mid-tier card with 12 gigabytes as well, GDDR6, which is actually interesting. And I believe that, that they are taking the same exact way that AMD took from RDNA to RDNA to, to RDNA 2, so lower buzz width, but with more VRAM and possibly more cache to compensate the lack of bandwidth. I believe that's the case. These GPUs, especially GPUs like the 580, they absolutely didn't need to have 256-bit bus. They did have it because Intel architecture was flawed to some extent, but we'll get there. So nice model, actually. Pretty good looking, the, the Arc A580. B580, sorry, the A580 is the current one, B580. Uh, so we have some nice pictures of the Steel Legend version and it actually looks not very nice, saying Steel Legend here and Intel Arc there. And then three days ago we had some more news on the Intel Arc B580 once again, uh, or the B580, and that happened because this night, Amazon spoiled Intel's plan for the grand reveal of Battle Mage GPU series. The company has been extremely quiet about its plans for the discrete graphics uh, and to the point where no one knew anything about the specs or planned launch date. Rumors circulating for weeks suggest that Intel Battle Mage would launch either um, by Black Friday, which I suppose it's not the case, but can still be the case, or in early 2025. And we have some more pictures here, once again, of the Challenger model and the Steel Legend model. The backplate looks kind of okay, -ish, I guess, 
in between what we would expect and the side one actually looks fine. I do like the Intel Arc, uh, the naming here looks fine, looks cool in my opinion. It turns out the images strongly suggest that the card uses PCI Express 5 design of the connector, similar to what was leaked yesterday for the RTX 50 series. At the same time, Hardware Lux noticed that at least half of the PCI interface has no caps, which typically means that half of the interface is not electrically connected. In other words, it would appear that the card is using PCI Express 5 8. And like I told you like a minute ago, if they follow the same route that AMD did going from RDNA, RDNA 1 to RDNA 2, it means that on the lower tier models they will actually cut the PCI connection as well. So we do have the, the full length of the PCI 16 times connection, but the connectors inside the card, inside the, um, the, the plate, let's call it that, uh, they are just not there. So we only have eight times instead of 16 times. Meaning that if you are running PCI Express 5 eight times, it means that it is exactly the same as running PCI Express 4 16 times. But, and there's always a but, if you just put this card on a motherboard that does not support the, the PCI Express 5 feature, it means that it will also run in PCI Express 4 eight times only, which are the, the lanes that are physically connected, which means that the, the, the actual bandwidth will be PCI Express 3 16 times or equal to PCI Express 3 16 times, which Honestly, for a GPU of these caliber, we don't know performance yet, but I, we, I suppose that this one should be around, let's say, RTX 4060 or RX 7600, possibly. Uh, and if that's the case, yeah, eight lanes are more than enough. Three PCI Express, three sixteen times is more than enough. So. So yeah. Now on the 24th, we now have more things. Intel Battle Mage incoming. Launch should be a formality. Intel is preparing to introduce its new discrete GPU, codename Battle Mage. It turns out the company made no effort to hide the upcoming launch, and that's not even referring to the already leaked ASRock graphics card. If we go, for example, here, you can see B580, play, create, generate ray tracing, 12 gigabytes of memory, XSS AI upscaling, of course, XCX, XMX AI engines, and so on. And I suppose that maybe Intel will release a new version of XCSS when they release this card. So we are a, in XCSS 1.2. We know that Intel was working uh, in releasing frame generation for XCSS as well. So maybe, again, maybe they can release frame generation, maybe XSS 2.0 or something like that with these cards. We don't really know if that's gonna happen or not, but if it would, that would be nice. And they, of course, improved the ray tracing performance. And if, says, if it says, play, create, generate, yeah, we're talking about AI cores as well. If you do some searching on Intel's website, chances are you will find several references to the Arc B series. Of course, the B refers to Battle Mage series, which are listed alongside the Core Ultra series too, also known as Arrow Lake or Lunar Lake. And if we search for the Intel Arc discrete graphics family, yes, we have the Intel Arc A series and the Intel Arc B series, so... It's another thing. As for the, the information that we have so far, at least by the date, uh, we know, for example, comparing the A580 to the B580, we have Battle Mage versus Alchemist, of course. The amount of XE cores we still don't know yet. I mean, we might have less, we might have more, we still might have the same. As for the GPU clock, yes, the, five, the 580, for example, the GPU clock was 1.7, it would boost a bit higher, of course, but generally 1.7, and now this one can go up to 2.8 gigahertz. So it's 1.1 gigahertz if we go to the ASRock Steel Legend model, which is a huge increase let alone the other things, if real 2.8 gigahertz compared to 1.7, it's 1.1 gigahertz increase, which is huge in terms of performance. If we go, for example, here, and we can go simply like 2.8, 1.7, and we're talking about a 64% increase 64% increase in frequency, which is insane. As for the memory, we also have more memory, four gigabytes more memory, still GDDR6. We're talking about an entry level card, of course. Memory buzz it's, is decreased, of course. We have 12 gigabytes, we need to have 192 bit buzz. 
we can have 256 bits, but at the same time we have higher memory speed, leading us to a maximum memory bandwidth of 456 gigabytes instead of 512. But 512 gigabytes of memory bandwidth or gigabits per second is entirely not needed for a GPU of this caliber. Uh, it is not just it is just not strong enough to really need this bandwidth, especially with 8 gigabytes GDDR6. And now we have another one. Intel Battle Mage preparing for battle, and according to ZDNet Korea, Intel is set to launch its new discrete GPU series this year. From what we know so far, at least, AMD and Nvidia will release their GPUs next year, and Nvidia usually starts with the top tier, the 5090 or the, um, the 5080, 5070 Ti or something like that first, and then they will they will release the lower to mid tier cards, which is what has been in the previous years. AMD usually did the opposite, so they started with the lower tier and then they reached the high tier, but then they started making ex exactly the same as Nvidia, releasing the top tier GPUs first and then the, the low to mid tier. And what happens is that with RDNA 4, at least according to what we know, we won't have a top tier GPU, the maximum one being like the 8800 XT, so if AMD, if AMD actually releases, let's say, the 8800 XT, the 8700 XT, just those two cards, or even the 8600 XT, even in that specific scenario, uh, Intel will still have its place to actually go into the market, because if they price these GPUs correctly, they will sell. Their drivers are getting better and better, and I believe that, once again, they will sell if priced accordingly. Now we have some interesting notes here, typically based on our knowledge, ASRock is one of the companies that provides such image, such images sorry, relatively soon to distributors and retailers. Perhaps the RP 580 images that were leaked by the retailer were not embargoed simply because ASRock did not have any specific date in mind, so it might mean that the GPU does not come before 2025, but again, if it did, it would be actually a great thing since Intel had that space in that specific time, so they will they would take like one or two months more, and in that time frame, Intel could sell. But our quest for a new launch date continues, and ZDNet Korea seems to have some information, which doesn't give us a lot of more details, of course, but does confirm that Battle Mage will be released this year, specifically before the end of December at the latest, which is actually great for people getting gifts for Christmas, for example, or people that got some money in Christmas and now they will spend it in between Christmas and the new year, uh, and people that really like Intel, they will definitely buy their GPUs. And again, the, the Alchemist GPUs, the A-series, weren't that bad, especially now, they aren't that bad, they have some issues here and there in some games, some issues that are related to the architecture itself, so if Intel keeps improving their drivers and they now have an improved architecture on top of their improved drivers, the experience might be much better, not only in terms of performance, but in terms of frame smoothness, in terms of stability and so on, and that's really interesting because we definitely need competition and with Intel we can actually have a new price war since Intel does need the market share. Uh, so it will be interesting I guess or at least I hope that's the case. I hope that Intel just makes the pricing really aggressive to sell and get more market share leading the other companies to decrease prices as well. But I guess we'll see. So that's it guys, I guess that we're gonna have Intel GPUs before the end of the year and if I can grab one or if I get if I can actually get my hands on one, I will surely get one and test it for you guys to see the performance differences, how it goes in terms of software, stability, uh, frame time, frame timing in some games, which were was one of the worst points with Intel Alchemist cards. And I'm really eager to test the third competitor and, and see how it goes. Uh, well, it would be nice if Intel actually sent me some cards, but I guess they won't do that. Um, and I mean, they are on a really rough spot and lower tier reviewers, or at least I'm saying this in terms of, of the amount of subscribers and so on, reviewers like me that are quite small, they won't send GPUs to them and that's completely fine because again, they are on the rough spot and they need to really send the samples to the more relevant channels and that's perfectly understandable. But again, if I'm able to snatch one, I'll get it and I'll test it for you guys. Even to help Intel, because I don't really like Intel as a company. Uh, the same goes for Nvidia generally, because of their their 
the things that they do, like the, the RTX 4080 12 gigabytes, remember that? Yeah, lots of people don't remember, but I do, and I don't like their decisions as a company. But again, I will always be unbiased, and buying the products or not, you'll get the real results. Not fiddled results, not um, tempered results, just the reality. And by the way, if someone from Intel is actually going to release XCSS 2.0 uh, and they want to send it to me, just do it. <laughs> just do it because I'm very eager to test it. Thank you very much once again and see you guys in the next video. Cheers.